जय श्री माता जी कम मदर कॉल लेट्स गो टू मदर फॉर पीस जॉय एंड ऑल द सोल्यूशंस फॉर आर लाइफ वी आर सो हैप्पी टू शेयर दैट मिस्टर दूलियो कट्रोच आई एल रिक्वेस्ट हिम बिकॉज माई एक्सेंट इज नॉट वेरी नाइस फॉर इटेलियन So, Dulio ji, can you tell your name yourself, Italian name? Just Dulio. <laughs> okay, just Dulio. Fine. We all know the one name that is Kabela gives so much happiness to us, so much respect and awe when this na- name comes because Sri Mata ji's more than hundred pujas in the sakar form was performed over there. and till now people come from nearly 140 countries to attend various pujas in baniya so our dear brother mr dulio he is in <clears throat> sahaj yoga from 1981 and it is going to be around 38 39 years what a wonderful time what a great journey now we will have short introduction about mr dulio our brother dulio ji is a very dedicated sahajyogi and he is uh, also the member of world council he is a professional architect and used to have a big construction company building houses and roads but for the last few years he has dedicated himself for sahaj yoga work taking care of uh, sahaj yoga international school in kebella holy mother's castle and all arrangements re- required for various uh, programs and pujas uh, in sahaj yoga in kebella besides this very few people know that he was living in brazil for few years and uh, there he has put in all his effort work and put his earnings and money to establish two sahaj yoga ashrams in brazil he's such a wonderful sahaj yogi we have and uh, will be very sweetly uh, surprised to know that uh, he is also done his doctorate in uh, philosophy he has written many books regarding how mankind has evolved and how human beings are facing many problems of stress and tension how there is a divine energy which is there waiting to help them and in helping them to find the happiness so we first request dulio ji to share some of his uh, research work and uh, all the experiments of science on effect of uh, sahaj yoga meditation on human beings Mr. Nico, thank you for uh, this introduction. But now it's difficult to talk after such an introduction. I'm feeling quite shy about what you said. Uh, so we can talk about some experiment that the, ma- that the, uh, the, the, the medicine done, the science have done, especially very great, very interesting uh, experiment through or research through the neuroscience. Uh, in the last years, the neuroscience studied quite a lot the effect of meditation on human beings. And it is very surprising because the effect that they are testifying is exactly what Shimataji told us since long. I give you just a few examples. Uh, in Milan, uh, they are doing some research in the main and most important faculties of uh, University of Economy in Milano called Bocconi. And uh, they are making experiment putting some electrodes on the brain to measure the level of the waves, what, what means the electromagnetic waves in the brain uh, during different states of mind. For example, when you are stressed 
or when you are relaxed or when you are meditating. Uh, they are doing this kind of research to see how the stress affects the level of decision in the manager. And that is very important for economy. And how meditation can help or improve the level of the management. And what was discovered was impressive, especially with true uh, Sahaja Yoga meditation, what they saw is, is truly uh, great. For example, it is proved that, uh, and is, I mean, the science knows that uh, when we normally live our normal life, uh, we have certain waves, electromagnetic waves in our brain that are, that are called beta waves. When we sleep, for example, we go into a level called alpha, alpha uh, uh, waves. Well, they see that through the meditation, we come to a level where the waves in our mental, in our brain, reach the point of alpha wave. Still, you are completely aware. The science doesn't know how to explain it. That you are completely aware, like when you are awake, but your waves are completely calm. And when we are waves, mental waves are calm, your capacity to understand and to elaborate become much, much greater. And not only you stop to the alpha waves, but also you go to the theta one, that are even more calm, and that you can get only in the very uh, silent sleep, we can say. Well, you can get it also during meditation, when you are completely aware of everything. So, why? Because you reach the level of faultless awareness, where you are, that is the Nidvichara Samadhi, where you are completely aware, but no thoughts are there to disturb your mind. And the thoughts are always related to the past or to the future. Never the thoughts are in the present. So, what happened? But if you can go to the level of thoughtless awareness, that means that you can stay in the reality. So what you observe, I mean now also for a manager, is great because you observe the reality as it is, not influenced by your mind, by your emotion, by your mental projection. You can perceive what it is in reality, uh, here and now. That is one point. Another uh, discover that they did is, for example, that uh, uh, we know we have what is called brain cortex in our brain, and the brain cortex has a kind of thickness that reaches maximum when uh, you have more or less 20 years of age, mm -hmm. and then it goes decreasing more and more and more. The brain cortex is the one who gives you the rationality, but also the memory, but also a lot of other quality, like the language, like uh, the speech, I mean, uh, the capacity to, to deal uh, with the daily, day-by-day -day life. And the science show how, in the normal life, this thickness go to be thin and thin and thin, more and more and more, according to the age. But now the proof that through meditation, the thickness of the brain, of the, of the uh, brain cortex, is exactly the same when you are 20, or you are 40, or you are 50, or you are 60. Means that through meditation, you can keep your level of memory, of intelligence, of rationality, and of course, you increase the level of intuition, that for us is very, very important. Yeah, intuition and, is something very, very, Great. And uh, allow me to uh, talk also about to another experiment, quite interesting, related with the hormones. In our brain, we have uh, uh, all the, our feeling, all our emotion are given by some, uh, some hormones called neuro, uh, I don't, sorry, I don't know the name exactly in English, but we call it a uh, neurotransmittitori neurotransmitters that uh, send the signal from one neuron to the other. Well, what happened? 
that, for example, every time you feel happy, why you feel happy? What, what, what is happening in your brain? Actually, the happiness is given by some uh, hormones called dopamina, who is released in the brain. But the dopamina has, is limited and also has a limited effect. That means that every time after a period of happiness, it is compelled to get in a level of unhappiness or sadness. Because when the dopamine decreases, you feel uh, unhappy. And you can never keep the dopamine forever. So we know that every time we desire something and we get bad things, we feel happy. What does it mean? The dopamine is released in the brain. But after some times, again, you feel sad because the, dip the dopamine goes down. And so you start desiring something else and then something else. And the economy is based on that, on the fact that we will never be satisfied with anything. Because every time you reach something, you want something else. And why? Because the dopamine is based on the expectation. Is released based on expectation. But the science discovers when during meditation, the brain releases 65% more dopamine than usual. And it is endogenous dopamine, means created by the brain itself. And as this dopamine comes not as a consequence of an expectation, but comes just through the Kundalini awakening, after feeling the joy of meditation, you don't have the sadness that come after the happiness. You can continue with the state of joy. So there is a difference between joy and happiness. The happiness is always followed by the sadness. But when you get into meditation and the, and the Mother Kundalini help in releasing more and more and more dopamine, as this is not a consequence of expectation, because you are in faultless awareness, you don't fall, it's not followed by sadness. So what Shimataji was explaining to us now is proved by science. So not only dopamine, but also beta endorphin and more other hormones related with the serenity, with calm and peace, are proved to be released during the meditation. meditation. And uh, it, it, of course, it has no side effect. It is just pure joy, just pure joy expressing itself. So again and again, uh, science discovered what Shimataji was explaining since long. And of course, we don't need the proof of science because we can prove it on ourselves. That is even more important. But it is just interesting to see how also uh, the human rationality little by little is coming close to the teaching of the divine. So the Kundalini passing through different uh, centers, enlightening the different energies, ultimately comes to the brain and enlightens the Viratangana power. At this point, at the brain point, the Kundalini starts spreading in the head. She, of course, shoots off from the Sahasrara, but also she trickles down through this plate of the brain downwards Evidemment. on the sympathetic. That relaxes you. That's why you feel relaxed. It relaxes the sympathetic. That enlarges the centers. It brings it back to its uh, normal positions. The enlargement of the parasympathetic or sushumna makes the Kundalini rise in more quantum. It is all done by a reflex action of Kundalini. So the Kundalini is already built in such a manner that when she rises, she automatically does all these things. So your Kundalini has got the power to enlighten all your centers and 
to enlighten your brain and to relax you, to increase the size of the centers and make the Kundalini rise again. But the Kundalini has a very special power that every human being's Kundalini knows Me. Many people who have just seen My photograph have got their Kundalini awakened. But if you, our centers are uh, very clouded or exhausted or jammed together or separated to get away from each other, then the Kundalini stops there. That's why some people get Realization very fast and some take time. Whatever you have said in the brain and in everything, there has to be a supply. If you want a water, water, water should be available. If uh, there is a rain, we should have a umbrella. So there, there, sh there should be a connectivity, so that our body is feels now. I am having an umbrella. I will not get wet. Right. That is why Shmatri says that uh, uh, we have to meditate every day, yes. morning and evening. evening. And uh, of course, if you don't meditate, you don't get connection. So I mean, it's very basic. Uh, so again, we come to the point, we should meditate morning and evening, but meditation is not just sitting or just reciting mantra or just uh, uh, sitting in a strange position. Meditation is to get to that connection. And let me say that uh, uh, more important than anything is just to try to open our heart and feel the presence of the Divine in our heart. Because again, we come to the first point that we are already there. We are already one with the Adi Shakti. We are already one with this all-pervading power. The only things we are not aware. So when we are not aware, we create problem for ourselves. Just because our mind is not connected with reality, so our mind is the one who creates problem. Yeah. So it's very easy. If we can overcome our mind, and come to the silence of the Spirit, then everything becomes easy. So, uh, we also try to be, I mean, uh, to keep on reality. We know that uh, this is the optimum and that sometimes we are not at this stage. And uh, moreover, most of the time we spend our daily life still involved in our ego and our conditioning. That is true. Uh, Shimatasi says that uh, the ego is a myth, as we said before, but is a very sticky myth. And uh, as we are with this ego since we are born, it's like the noise that is on the back and often sometimes you don't even listen to it, yes, but it is there. So our ego is always with us, always ready to jump out. So ego actually is not an enemy. We need our ego to deal with the daily, daily life. So again, in a balanced way. because ego is a, a perfect instrument if we use it as an instrument. But if the ego become our master and if the ego overcome our sensibility, our come beloved, and we are not able more to connect, then he become our master, and then we are lost. So what is, the, what is a good instrument, for sure, is a bad master. First of all, I have to tell you, the mind about which we speak and depend upon is a myth. There's nothing like mind. Brain is reality, not the mind. Mind is created by us reacting to outside. Either we react to conditionings or to our ego. Thus this mind is created like bubbles on the ocean of reality. But that's not reality. With this mind, whatever we decide, 
we know is very limited, elusive, and sometimes shocking. The mind always moves in a linear direction, and because there's no reality in it, it recoils and boom racks. Thus, all the enterprises, all the projections so far we have done, it seems come back to us. Whatever they discover comes back to us as a big destructive power or a very big shock. So one has to decide what to do, how to be out of this trap of our mind. Kundalini is the solution. When she is awake, she takes you. With that awakening, she takes you beyond your mind. The first thing is to go beyond your mind. With mind you will do many things, but it will not be satisfying, it will be not a solution, it will not help. And when we start depending too much on our mind, we develop all kinds of physical, mental, emotional problems. Now the latest is the stress. Stress, and the stress has no solution, they say. But in Sahaja Yoga we find the solution. By crossing over this mind, It's like a barrier for our advancement. So when you get your Realization, you must understand that your Kundalini has taken your attention beyond the mind. Shimataji always said that we have not to believe with a, bl with a blind faith. We have to test it, we have to experiment and see by ourselves. Now, what the science says? The science says that uh, you should not believe anything till you, uh, you can prove it, you can experiment it. So again, we are completely, uh, we can say, uh, we, we, we agree with that. And uh, as scientists, we should come to this kind of experiment with open mind and just check. Great. We can't, because otherwise, if we come to this experiment with our judgment of our old experience, we will never get it. Because again, we are trying to put some old idea of a new experiment. No, we have to come with open mind and just check, not believing, just check and see what is going on and feel if vibration are there or not and see if this connection is there or not. And that is uh, the true scientific mind. Uh, so again, it is an uh, invitation to everyone to tr truly go through it with uh, sincerity, honesty, and, uh, and, and check about that. Uh, we are believers of truth, actually. So yes, we... It's a golden line that we are the believer of truth. It's a golden line. Yeah. The point is that everyone says that, but then we come to the point, how can you see that is the truth? Yeah. Again, we can see into yourself what is going on with yourself, but also you can see now what the science is, is, is uh, discovering that is just what Shimataji taught us since long. Yeah. So when you see all these coincidences, you can understand that you are coming closer and closer to the yeah. truth. But again, we come to the first point. We should open our heart, as you said, and try to invite this kind of connection with the primordial power. All the rest are just walls. Very right. And we come to the essence of truth, and the essence of truth is experiment, is experience. Yeah. We have to taste it, we have to feel it, otherwise the words are useless. Correct. Dear brothers and sisters, please sit comfortably, close your eyes and open your hands to receive the most precious gift to mankind, the Self-Realization 
गिवन बाय आर होली मदर श्री माता जी द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग इज टू गेट द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन सो द फर्स्ट थिंग इज टू गेट कनेक्टेड टू दिस ऑल परवेडिंग पावर this is extremely simple which you cannot achieve by reading by studying or by doing anything it is not a mental act but it's a living happening please close your eyes so now raise your right hand on the left hand side on your heart and here you have to say with full confidence again mother i am the pure spirit mother i am the pure spirit i have told you that this all pervading power is the ocean of knowledge ocean of compassion ocean of bliss but above all it is the ocean of forgiveness and whatever mistakes you have committed can be easily dissolved by it so please forgive yourself and put your right hand at the corner of your neck and your shoulder and turn your head to your right here you have to say mother i am not guilty at all please say this mother i am not guilty at all whether you forgive or you don't forgive you don't do anything but if you don't forgive then you play into wrong hands here now you put your right hand on top of your forehead and put it down from your heart you have to say mother i forgive everyone and don't think about the people you may have to forgive just say mother i forgive everyone in general don't think about them please forgive me if i have done anything wrong knowingly or unknowingly say it from your heart stretch your palm fully and put it the center of your palm on the fontanelle bone area which was a soft bone in your child now press back your fingers as far as possible and with the pressure move your scalp move it clockwise slowly now here <coughs> again i cannot force self realization on you you have to ask for it so move your hand so that you move the scalp well with a pressure saying seven times mother please give me self realization mother please give me self realization now take down your hands put both the hands towards me like